Number 1. Lindholm Hoya. Minutes from Alborg is an extensive Viking burial site marked by stone circles covering an entire hillside. The majority of these tombs belong to the Viking, but some are earlier, from the year 500 during the Nordic Iron Age. What has preserved the site so well is the same thing that caused the Vikings to abandon it, deforestation brought about sand drifts, burying the hillside for centuries. Number 2. Kill the Barken. Strolling these gardens and in the shade of oaks and beech trees is a thoroughly enjoyable way to spend a summer afternoon. There are ornamental ponds and sculptures around the park, and the summer also means public events, so the park is a venue for all sorts of goings-on during the city carnival in late May. Also spend a few minutes in the park of music. Every time a famous artist comes to the park he or she plants a tree. Number 3. Gudolfi Donkirk. Alborg's cathedral was built towards the end of the 1300, but if you step down to the crypt you'll see stonework that belonged to an even earlier church from the 1100s. Much of the decoration in the church interior is from the Renaissance period, installed when Alborg was enjoying great wealth through trade. The altar candelabras for instance were a gift from a local businessman and his wife in 1685. Number 4. Nordcraft. It opened its doors in 2009, and is a multidisciplinary venue with an independent cinema, theater, design studios and exhibition space. If you're into live music check the listings at Scroen, which has something interesting going on most weeks. If you're not here for an event or exhibition you could still spend a while appreciating the architecture of this innovative complex or come to Nordcraft for a meal one of the three restaurants in the complex. Number 5. Alborg for Svarsad Garnissons Museum. This military museum tries to be as interactive as possible, encouraging visitors to get up close to or enter a huge catalog of vehicles and aircraft. It's set in a Second World War hangar and holds a collection that touches pretty much every sort of armed force, from army and air force to the police. These items date back as far as 200 years and alongside medals and documents and tools include blades and guns, which you aren't encouraged to touch. Number 6. Jürgen Olufsen's House. Three stories high and blending half timbering with sandstone walls, this beautiful merchant's house is held as Denmark's finest Renaissance merchant's mansion. It was built for local mover and shaker Jürgen Olufsen in 1616, and he went on to become mayor of the city in 1618. So many original flourishes have survived, like the hoist that was used to pull sacks up to the grain loft. Number 7. Jens Bang's House. A marvelous gabled mansion, this five-story tall landmark is in the Dutch Renaissance style. It was constructed in 1624 for merchant Jens Bang, who was the half-brother of Jürgen Olufsen, owner of the other Renaissance mansion close by. For more than three centuries this building has been occupied by a pharmacy, which as you might guess is the oldest in the city. Number 8. Alborg Waterfront. This part of the city has just been revitalized by the prestigious C.F. Muller Studio, up to the 1980s it was Alborg's industrial hub, dominated by shipyards and big factories. Since those days the shore of Olympiord has slowly been remodeled as a cultural area, and the new waterfront was one of the finishing touches. Number 9. Alborg Zoo. If it's sunny and you've got little ones with you a zoo is always a good bet for a successful day out. Alborg Zoo also has great conservation credentials, emphasizing fair trade, research and breeding programs, which will give some peace of mind to people who have their doubts about animals in captivity. If you time it right you can see penguins, elephants, big cats, sea lions and other species at feeding time during the summer months. Number 10. Alborg Historiske Museum. Alborg has 1,200 years of history, and you'll be able to get the facts at this stuccoed neoclassical building next to the Budolfi Church. You'll find out about life under Nazi occupation, see what it was like to work on a factory floor in the early 20th century and, best of all, get to see the interior of an original Renaissance room. This interior is the bit you'll remember most, the walls are delicately carved with panels embellished with columns and pilasters. Hope you like this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel.